In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read in the document, uh, Traditionus Custodes, the concern for the Holy Father for ecclesial union based upon the recognition of the uh, new rite of Mass. We also read in the response to the dubia the following. The text of the motu proprio and the accompanying letter to the bishops of the whole world clearly express the reasons for the decisions made by Pope Francis. The first aim is to continue in the constant search for ecclesial communion, which is expressed by recognizing in the liturgical books promulgated by the popes St. Paul VI and St. John Paul II, in conformity with the decrees of the Second Vatican Council, the unique expression of the Lexal Rondi of the Roman Rite. This is the direction in which we wish to move, and this is the meaning of the responses we publish here. Every prescribed norm has always the sole purpose of preserving the gift of ecclesial communion by walking together with the conviction of mind and heart in the direction indicated by the Holy Father. It is sad to see how the deepest bond of unity, the sharing in the one bread broken which is his body, offered so that all may be one, becomes a cause of division. I think that instead of making a variety of different statements of my own about what I tend to think about this on a theological level, aside from the fact that there have been different rites in the church uh, since its very, from its inception, the fact that the apostles wrote their own rites and that these became the different rites throughout the entire history of the church is part of that. I think that's part of it, but that's just an observation that I'm basically making about the history. I think it would be better, however, to actually listen to some of the popes regarding what, uh, in regard to the unity in relationship to different rites. We read in the Venerable Pius, the, or Blessed Pius the Ninth, the following observation that he made in the encyclical Amantissimus of April 7, 1862. The rich variety of lawful rites in no way harms the unity of the Catholic Church. In fact, it contributes to a great deal to increasing her dignity, her majesty, her magnificence, and her splendor. We read in Leo the Thirteenth the following, that is, in a letter to uh, Orientalium Dignitas of November 30th, 1894. We consider it of the utmost importance to give all our attending attention to defending, as we have always done, the particular discipline of the Eastern Church. We have always advised the colleges recently founded, though in those nations and those that will be founded in the future, to have the maximum respect and all proper regard for their rights, of which students should have experience and knowledge. Their preservation is more important than what one may think. The noble and glorious antiquity of the various rites is the ornament of the whole church, and it affirms the divine unity of the Catholic faith. To the principal Eastern churches, those rites clearly prove their apostolic origin, and at the same time bring to light their intimate union with the Church of Rome from the beginning of Christianity. Perhaps nothing illustrates better the note of Catholicity in the Catholic Church of God than the singular homage of the different forms of these ceremonies, celebrated in languages venerable in their antiquity and made all the more sacred by their use with the apostles and the fathers made of them. That homage is, as it were, a renewal of the exceptional homage rendered to Christ, the divine founder of the Church, by the wise men who came from the different parts of the East to adore him. Then we read from Pope Pius XII in an address to the pilgrims of the Byzantine Rite of October 18, 1940. There is not one truth for the Latins and another for the Greeks. There is but one truth, which Jesus Christ announced for the world, that which all his church, the pillar and the mainstay of the truth, professes. Such was precisely the great teaching of our predecessor Pius IX, when he once again affirming the lawfulness of the different rites which by their variety add to and multiply the splendor and majesty of Catholic worship. 
that we should not be induced to think that the different rites somehow are adverse to the Catholic faith or are a danger or creates a danger to souls or that it derogates from ecclesiastical unity. Then we read from St. John the 23rd in his encyclical Ad Petrum Cathedrum of June 29th, 1959. However, as all are aware, that does not prevent the use and approval in the Catholic Church of various rites by which she is displayed in greater beauty and, like the daughter of the King of Kings, seems to be dressed in variety, varied robes that all may obtain this true and harmonious unity, the Catholic priest, when he is celebrating the Eucharistic sacrifice, offers the spotless victim to the most merciful God, interceding in the first place for thy holy Catholic Church, that thou wouldst deign to give her peace and protection, to unite and guide her the whole world over, together with thy servant our Pope and all the true believers who foster the Catholic and apostolic faith. And we'll end with this. This is from Gregory the Sixteenth, in the letter Dolorem Quam Yam Diu of November thirtieth, eighteen thirty-nine. He says, "As we have the opportunity of writing you, we cannot refrain from indicating to you another point that requires a particular vigilance on the part of your fraternity, especially those very priests whom we have." already mentioned above who, taken in by novelty, do not fear to undervalue sacred rites and to criticize the venerable usages of the Church, nor spare any effort to induce you, venerable brothers, to publish a new ritual that will satisfy their desires, but conscious of your duty, watch constantly over the institutions of the ancients and never allow your clergy to depart from any prescription of the ritual of the Holy Roman Church or from any other rule that may have been inserted in any other ritual you use, provided that the ritual be ancient and approved by the lawful authority. We trust, Venerable Brethren, that you will take this advice to heart in all obedience, and knowing there have been changes in this field, we exhort and beseech thee in our Lord not to delay in suppressing and correcting the innovations introduced. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.